Hey everyone, today we have a pretty interesting product right here. This is Alphabet Macaroni from the late 1940s or maybe early 1950s. This is pretty cool. Alphabet's Macaroni, Creme brand, I think that's how you pronounce it. Something like that. Anyways, on the sides of this box, it has a weird price. It says $6.99. I'm thinking that's definitely not from when this was produced. Because even these days, it wouldn't be that expensive for macaroni. There's no way. I'm thinking that was probably put there by the antique dealer that this was bought from. It says it on both sides, though. $6.99. And on the back of it, we have multiple sets of instructions, but we're going to do just the uh, general instructions, which I'm going to read right here. Pour the contents of this package into two quarts of rapidly boiling water, to which two heaping teaspoons of salt have been added. Boil six to eight minutes until tender. Drain and chill, or do not chill, as directed by... Recipe selected. Alphabet macaroni may be used in any of your favorite macaroni recipes. So, it's basically the same. Everyone knows how to make macaroni. I've never put salt in mine. I don't know if it makes it better or not, but I have salt right here. We're going to try putting some salt in it. This salt is really big because I usually pour it into a grinder, but it won't matter. It'll just take a little longer to, to dissolve it. But I love the instructions on older packaging. It says things like rapidly boiling water. Most new instructions will just say boiling water. I have another pack of macaroni we opened from the 1950s. If you saw that video, it said on the box it even came with a free toy. Unfortunately, even in the 1950s, it was a piece of plastic. I did really expect more 70 years ago, but it was a garbage toy like you get today in a box of cereal, unfortunately. And it also says here a heaping pile of salt. I, I kind of like that. It's kind of interesting. I like how they worded things back then. A lot of older products like this would also use the term violently boiling, like the soup from the 50s we did last time. So we're going to open this up today. We're not going to use it all. It's in a paper box, so who knows what we might find. There might be, see how it's kind of open? Any bug could have got in there, so it's all determined on how was this stored? Whose house was it in the past 70 years? Maybe 80 years. That is what's going to determine it. Are we going to find little bugs in there like weevils? A lot of people get these tiny bugs, especially if you live in the West, that get into products. I don't know where this was stored. I have no idea what part of the country this may have been in for that amount of time. We might find bugs in here. Who knows? It's almost certainly rancid, but... I think it'll cook up just fine. It'll absorb, it'll cook the way it is, but the grain in it has, I can almost guarantee it is rancid. This is not sealed, it is a paper box. I don't think it's going to be tasty, but we will taste it. Assuming it's not full of bugs and poop. But we're going to take out our little cooktop. I got to run up to the kitchen and fetch a pot. We got some water right here, and we will start this thing up. The first thing I want to do is give you guys a close-up look of this old box and make sure I focus in on everything in case you want to pause and read it. So this is the product we opened in a video, I think almost three years back. Free toy. It was a piece of plastic. Yeah. Is this the one that said violently boil? Um... Yeah, it says violently boil. I thought it may have been another one. We opened a dry soup mix also that was super duper awesome from the 1920s. That actually tasted good. It did not go rancid because it was in a can completely sealed that entire time. I'm looking on my shelf. Where is it? I definitely didn't get rid of a can that special. Here it is right here. It says dehydrated vegetable mix. It mentions nothing about being noodles, but it was vegetable soup. I mean, um, alphabet soup. It was. There was actual noodles in here. We cooked it up, 
It tasted all right. It was probably not the color it should have made the broth, but it, it wasn't bad. That definitely stood up the test of time. That was awesome. Today's product, I think, will be like this. It's going to cook up fine, but it will likely have a rancid taste because the grain has gone bad. All right, I'm going to give you guys a close-up look at the box. You see, I'm assuming that was the antique seller. That's probably why it says number 10 for some reason when they were doing that. It's written with a pencil. It's not overexposed or anything. You just can't see it very good. See the wear and tear on the edges of the box? This has been moved around quite a bunch over the years. But it's in very good condition considering that. I don't know what that weird brown thing is. I'm assuming maybe it just got wet. Or it's a smear of maybe mouse poop. I don't know. It's going to be cooked regardless, so it shouldn't be a problem. Free from artificial color. Well, I wouldn't have expected much artificial color back then anyways. I find it very disappointing that the United States is one of the only countries that adds fake coloring to appeal to people. There's so many cancer-causing food coloring and dyes put in your food these days for absolutely no reason other than the product to look better. There are so many products that are not supposed to be the color they are. All right, everyone, I'm back. That big pot is just because I don't have a sink in here, and we'll strain it when we're done. So the instructions, the amount of water I'm supposed to add, I'm assuming is for the whole box. So I'm just going to use my best judgment. It doesn't really matter. I'm filling it up about halfway or so. And now we're going to put some salt in there, turn this thing on high, get it going. It's plugged in. And we're going to put some salt in there. I'm only going to put half the salt, it said, because we're obviously not cooking at all. When it says a heaping pile, I'm assuming it means not scraped off. So... We did that, we'll give it a little while to heat up, start boiling. I don't expect it to take more than a couple minutes to heat that stuff up. We're not rapidly boiling yet, but after just two minutes the salt has completely dissolved. And now I think it's time for us to go ahead and see what this looks like on the inside. So everyone. Now we're going to go ahead and open this up and see what we got inside. Try my best to not damage the box other than ripping the glue. As long as we don't rip the outside, we're okay. Oh, it's ripping. Oh, no, that's just some seam. Alright. Not opening how I wanted it to, but... We haven't damaged anything on the outside of the box visually yet. I can already see that looks like perfect, doesn't it? Something that's potentially 80 years old looks absolutely perfect. And there's also all the numbers in there. Yep, it's, it shows the numbers. Look at that. Let's give that a quick sniff. doesn't smell like noodles all I can smell is the musty box everything in there smells like the musty box that's definitely rapidly boiling now all right we're gonna dump this out because I just want to see what everything in here looks like just looking around for bugs and stuff because I guess I'm not looking at these products good enough a lot of this I'm gonna put back into the box all right so I'm looking carefully and this may have been a factory error or no I think this was bugs can I zoom in that far for you guys you see how it looks like it's actually been hollowed out um this is not zooming right let me try that again see how it looks like it's been actually hollowed out it looks like it's like a hollow cavity inside of the noodle. That's how small whatever bug this was. It's actually hollow, the inside of the noodle. That's kind of gross. I think something was definitely eating that. I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of them in here that look like a little teeny bug was hollowing it out. Or when it went into the mold at the factory, 
I guess there wasn't enough, so it maybe stuck to the edges of the mold. It's possible, but there are evidence that a bug maybe possibly was in here. Here's another one. See these ones stuck together? What is that on the end of the noodle? Is that potentially from a bug? I don't really know. But I'm not seeing little black spots, which would be poops from weevils or anything. So I'm going to assume this is probably just from the factory. So I'm going to go ahead and shovel half of this back in here. I should have brought a little shovel in. That would have been funny. You know, the little shovels and rakes they have when you are... Um, like when you have those cactus gardens, if you've ever seen what I'm talking about in someone's house. Alright, so we're cooking right here just under half. And maybe we did find the guy who made these. What's that little black speck down there? See it? I think we may have found a bug in there. Yeah, look at him. That may have just been the shell from the bug. You see how it just, I think it shattered too easily. Yeah, there was definitely a little bug in there, and that may have been what was eating, but I'm not seeing any black spots. So if I look carefully, they might be little tiny poops on the inside of this. It's possible there's little poops in there. I see little specks, but that could literally be anything. All right, so we did find one bug. It looks like a good amount of the noodles are actually hollowed out by something eating them. It's possible, but we're going to cook it anyways. I think, I think we'll do okay. That's definitely rapidly boiling now. Alright, time to pour this in without making a huge mess. Now these are very small, they're going to cook fast. Everything just stopped boiling. There we go, see the one sticking to the vapor right there. I think we'll do good. Just gotta keep that stirred for a little bit. These noodles might be too small even for my strainer. All right, everyone, let's turn that down a little bit. It's been in there for about five minutes. Let's try giving it a taste. Let's see if... All the vapor into my face. It smells like a musty cardboard box. That spoon is burning hot. Not the best, but I think it's done. Uh, all right, stove off. Let's go ahead and pour it in here. We can get a good look at it. Let it cool down for a minute. Get rid of that steam. All right, everyone, it's now been cooling for a couple of minutes, and visually, it doesn't look any different than what you would get today in the supermarket. It doesn't look any visually different. Not at all. But when I just gave it a taste test, obviously it's extremely salty. I've never had pasta where I put salt in it. I'm just trying to follow its instructions. If it wasn't for the salt, which is kind of masking it, which is gross, I can't really say it's gross, but it literally tastes like cardboard, really old, musty cardboard that sat in someone's house for the better part of the century. That's literally what it tastes like. We'll give it one more big taste test, and then we'll be done for today. All right, so let's give this one more test now. It's still very hot. It doesn't smell pleasant. It smells like wet cardboard. 
and it's probably rancid too, but I think the, yeah, it's definitely rancid, but the cardboard's kind of covering it up a bit. Oh. I can't. I'm not swallowing that again. I swallowed the first couple, but that big amount, it's, you can literally replicate that taste if you want. It's exactly the same as wet cardboard in salt water. Yeah. Cardboard in salt water. That's exactly what that tastes like. It's not good. Especially it being warm makes it even more gross. It's not, it's not good. All right, everyone. It's that time of the video. We are now in the laboratory, and today we're gonna fill the sink up and we're gonna feed all that soup to the whirlpool. We're not gonna fill it all the way. The whirlpool usually doesn't even work until it gets down a little bit. There we go. Wow, you can even see the letters getting sucked into it. Sometimes when we feed this drain, it's a nasty product and it makes the water all cloudy. You can't even see what's going on in there. But that's not a problem today. Just look at all those noodles just getting sucked on into that vortex. There we go. And the occasional big blast of water is actually good for the plumbing. Anything that might be building up in there will just go away. And the septic bacteria can eat this stuff, maybe. Although, this stuff is kind of gross. Look at those bubbles. That one doesn't want to go. A couple of them don't want to go. Yeah, there's some stubborn ones in there. There we go. For the some people who like to leave funny comments on this channel about me wasting water. All this water you're seeing here is being pumped out of my own ground and it's being immediately returned to my own ground right outside. That's how it works when you're in the country. And I got a comment the other day and I don't think it was joking. Someone was saying that you putting all the food down the drain, you're literally destroying your house and your neighbor's houses with sewer rats. Yes, I know rats can be a problem in certain spots. Usually not in a place that gets a hard winter, unless it's a big city. Because rats are not native, and they can't survive the winter unless they're in a building. But yes, newer houses typically have plastic plumbing pipes. Older houses have cast iron, so that wouldn't be a problem. Newer houses that have the plastic, especially the uh, sewer stack in the house... A rat can go, will go up and choose your sewer if you have sewer rats where you live. It'll come up, it will find a joint, like a fork in that plumbing stack, it will start chewing, and now the rat will go into your wall, attracted by the food you're putting down the drain. But who doesn't put food down their drain? In fact, most new homes have a garbage disposal, which is meant for putting food down there. But that makes perfect sense what you're saying, but you're forgetting that I live in the middle of nowhere with a private sewer system. It's a septic field. Nothing can get in that unless it, when, unless it got on the roof. It's not a problem at all, but I kind of wanted to talk about that subject because some people may not know that. There are sewer rats, and if you have a newer house, they can extremely easily chew their way into your house if something attracts them into the building. I learned that from other people's YouTube videos. For some reason, there's a 
guy who traps rats. I think he's from Arizona or California. He's always in my YouTube feed. That's who, that's who I learned that from. But I found it funny that I saw a comment like that on my feed. Well, today's a beautiful day. Today is August 23rd. And I'm going to go mow my lawn today. Usually I put off mowing the lawn because I like having fields and stuff. But those are such a pain in the butt to use a push mower. Someday if I ever find one free, I can't wait to fix up like a DR mower, which is meant for running over little bushes and stuff. Because here in the country, I like keeping most of the yard tall grass like fields. It also attracts animals and birds. All right, everyone, time to clean this up. Go do some dishes. And I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. I've been trying to upload on sort of a schedule. I've been trying to upload one old food video every weekend, and I'm going to continue doing that for a bit. And I do have some of the videos you see me uploading throughout the week are viewer um, suggestions, such as the whoop-ass video, the video of the Russian space food on the stove in the oil, and that popcorn variety video. If you have any ideas of new products you might want me to review, I'm always open to that. We have some other things coming up that I might be doing. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.